Okay, so one of the things that we're going to talk about is just what impact does the humans have on our current situation of the climate. Now, a couple of things that we need to look at and discuss is the basic idea. We have a couple of items in our atmosphere that we know cause an effect. Now, one of the things is, is we have something in the atmosphere called water vapor. Well, we know what that is. You know, that's H2O molecules that are fairly small that form our clouds and other items around in the globe. The next thing that we see is something called methane. Now, methane is a gas. It's combustible. Um, you know, some of the sources of methane are just escaping from drilling and such. Um, so, we have, and humans and all animals that consume plant material will generate methane. And then another one is, is carbon dioxide. So we normally refer that to that as CO2. Um, so those things in there have some effect. Number one, all of those will absorb energy. And since the sun is a primary source of energy, they have a lot of it to absorb. Now, when we look at that, we have a couple of things that are going to go on. And, you know, number one, our Earth here at the planet, this the, the blue planet here, we have a layer of atmosphere on top of the Earth that surrounds us in an envelope. Now, a couple of things that's special about that atmosphere. Number one, it provides us with our breathable air and a few other things that we need. It's our, our, where we get our weather and our rain and our precipitation, but it does a couple of other things. Number one, it provides an insulating layer that keeps the heat trapped between the top layer and the surface of the earth. Now that's important to us. So we're going to take a little bit closer look at this, and we studied this once before when we talked about planets. So hold on just a second here, we're going to get ready. Now one of the things that we're looking at right here is the, what's called the greenhouse effect. Now we're going to talk about the fact that some of the gases, some of the energy, makes it through the layer of the atmosphere or the clouds and such, and it gets through to the surface of the earth. Once it's absorbed into the ground and the ground's warmed up, sometimes we'll emit some of it back up, back up. But if we have certain chemicals or items in those clouds and lower levels of atmosphere, it will bounce it back towards the surface of the earth, causing the earth to get warmer and warmer and warmer. So we have referred to this effect as the greenhouse effect. Now, this may lead to an extensive effect of global warming. Now, this effect can generate upon itself. Now, we want to, we want to take a look at some of those gases that are in, the most effective in it. Number one is CO2. Number two is methane. So we want to examine some of the sources of those and what we deal with. Now, a couple of things that, number one, CO2. What's just combustion of hydrocarbons? Okay, I'm, it's hard to read that. I apologize. Hydrocarbons. Now, hydrocarbons is something that has a C and an H in it. Now, those C's and H's are directly related to fossil fuels, oil, gas, coal, all of those. So for production of CO2 is when we burn something. Now when we take a look at burning something, so we have a fuel, some kind of C and H, we add oxygen to it, and it produces a couple of things. We are going to produce water and CO2. Now, when we look at that combustion, and that's what we're talking about when we combine with oxygen, we're going to combust, we're going to produce water and CO2. The next time you're out driving around, take a look at some of the tailpipe in the car in front of you, 
you'll notice that every now and then you'll see water droplets come out of it. That's from the water being produced. You don't see the CO2. Now, that, that, that has an effect. Now, on our planet, we have items that crave. So our plant life that uses the photosynthesis effect, they need CO2 to live. So that's a good thing. However, we just talked about the fact that if we say, let's say um, we take the state of West Virginia. Here, let me attempt to draw the state really bad here. Okay, now let's say the state currently. All right, so we got the state of West Virginia there. Now we're going to look at it. And we're going to, what if we, if we knew it was all covered with force? Okay. Now, we've talked earlier that says that, you know, if you have an area that's a park or you're out in the country, no matter what, it always seems to be slightly cooler than it is if you're in a city. Well, talk about reasons why. Well, well number one, you have blacktop and all that stuff. Now, what if we just go through and every so often we bulldoze down part of a forest, build a big city? Let's pull down, bulldoze down another forest, build a big city. Bulldoze down another forest, build a big city. L let's just get rid of a whole bunch of forest over here, and let's not replant it. Now, what's going to happen to those areas to begin with? Number one, they're going to get warmer because they don't have that cover of vegetation. Number two, no longer eats CO2. No longer consumes CO2. No longer consumes, no longer. So that CO2 doesn't have anywhere to go. Now, we look at a bunch of things that we've done in the past to really, really help. You know, we have a couple of initiatives. We're switching over from uh, gas cars to a few other things, um, from gas cars to electric cars. Uh, our biggest impact, and this is what people forget, number one, we really need to work on mass transit. We need to work on proper use of resources. You know, not 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 you know, not everything needs to be needs to be used. So we've got to try to figure out a couple of things. Now we're going to take a look and see what has happened over the years. So when we look at our temperature over the last, so what's it, 130 years there, um, we take a look at just a general trend. So when we take a look at this and we talk about what's going on and, and we look at everything that we see here, if we drew a line in, from the middle of this to the middle of this, we see this trend. Now, that is called a trend line. We have drawn those. We do a scatter plot, we do a line of best fit, and we take a look at what goes on. So the question is, is what is happening to the temperatures in the last 130 years? Now, why would we focus on 130 years? Well, in the mid-1800s is when we had the Industrial Revolution and our consumption of fossil fuels jumped tremendously. And then, post-1940 is when our population in the world steadily increased at a fairly quick pace. So we had a lot of things occur there. So we'll take a look at that a little bit later on, and we'll look at natural resources and such in later chapters.